live from San Francisco, celebrating 10 years of high-tech coverage, it's theCUBE, covering VMworld 2019. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back everyone, live CUBE coverage here in San Francisco, California at Moscone North. We're in the lobby for VMworld 2019. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. Our 10 years covering uh, VMworld, it's been exciting, Dave. And we've watched all the changes and our next guest is going to illuminate all the benefits at the top of the stack, as I call it, the end user experience. Shekhar Iyer, who's the v SVP and general manager, the end user computing group within VMware. What that means is he takes care of all the stuff that where virtualization creates those efficiencies. Uh, I think what Palmer used to call it, end user computing still, they still had that name back then if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's, it you know, the name is stuck because it's, uh, it sort of encompasses all the technologies that end users use, right, as digital interfaces. So that's why it's end user computing. It's any digital interface that anybody at work uses. Now the interesting thing is people don't work in an office anymore and the interface is no longer just a laptop. Well, I want to get into some specific questions around the work environment, because whether you're working at a cafe or at home, there's all kinds of security issues, also user experiences, collaboration software, but let's first get the news out of the way, digital workspace news, what's, the, what's going on at the show, what are you guys announcing? Yeah, so before we get into the news, let me frame it up a little bit, right? Uh, because when you think about organizations today, especially with the changing demographics, where they're going in terms of new devices, the mobility phenomenon, right, the transformation they're going through in terms of just their own cloud and apps and so on, right, every, every one of those things affects employees, right? And at the end of the day, you know, what organizations want is for the employees to have a great experience, all the way, as we call it, from hire to retire. Now to do that, you know, you need a platform because I can't just give you a pretty app running on your laptop and say, great, that's, that's the end of your employee experience, right? It's fundamentally transforming the own, whole environment. That's why it still retains its term end user computing. And to do that, you have to hit at least three facets, right? One is, of course, how do you deliver a great experience to the employee where they can get any app, any device, anywhere, any form, any way. That's one aspect of it. Uh, the second aspect of it is from an IT standpoint, I've got to manage all this complexity, right? And it's only growing, it's not shrinking with all the heterogeneity. So there's a management angle of it. And then the third angle of it is um, you know, security, as you pointed out, right? Yeah. Security is so important. In fact, what you users want is they don't want any security-driven compromises. What is an example of a security-driven compromise? That I have to go through three passwords because you simply don't trust me. Heck, figure it out is what the users say to IT, especially the millennials, right? Yeah. So, uh, so you've got to address that. So the platform that we have, Workspace ONE, actually addresses all three. So we have innovations today and news in all three areas, right? So as an example, employee experience is something we've been driving with enterprises and corporations for at least two years now. We've upped the ante, we're now introducing a virtual assistant that employee can use uh, either through voice or text to essentially ask questions. Hey, what's, how do I get into Wi-Fi? Uh, what's my employee directory? Um, you know, who do I go to for uh, you know, this and that, right? As the employee onboards the organization. Those are examples a virtual assistant can do it, so we released a virtual assistant. So that's a big piece of news. Uh, in the employee experience area, another big piece of news is we are introducing a tech preview of what we call digital employee experience management, which means IT now has a user experience score that they can look at and say, hey, is Dave getting a great experience? No, it's poor, and I can dive right in, I can find out the root cause, I can fix the issue, and I can do that automatically through so the platform. So new KPIs can come out of that, right? In Absolutely. Terms of serviceability? Absolutely, and I think, you know, I've talked to many CIOs, and we, you know, we drive Workspace ONE, and they've for a while sort of told me, hey, this is all good, but I don't know how I'm doing. How am I doing with respect to, you know, your best best customer? Am I ahead, I'm behind, I'm far behind? So this really helps them. Sure, let me ask the question, because that's a good point. I want to, because this gets down to the heart of the issue. What is the top request that you're getting from your customers, or top two or three features that can, the pattern that continually comes back from your customer base when it comes to end user computing these, the, uh, the experience? I think it spans all three things, right? So the first thing is they're saying, listen, I want to be able to deliver a great employee experience. So, so you know, help me do that and help me measure and make sure I know what journey I'm in. So that's one, right? Second is, I've got this heterogeneity. I've got this complexity. I've got you know, iOS uh, phones. I've got Android yeah. tablets. I've got a, you know, a Dell laptop. I've got a MacBook. I've got 
you know, a rugged device, um, I've got some workspace IoT devices like printers and et cetera, et cetera. I've got this heterogeneity, just help me manage this complexity in a sort of a unified, seamless, uniform way, right? And third is help me secure my enterprise. So there's a whole model emerging called zero trust where in the old world, you, what you would do is you would just build a huge wall around the enterprise, right, a perimeter, and say I'm inside the wall, I, I need to be domain joined on that inside the firewall, and therefore I'm good. I mean, you, you got to throw that out of the window anymore. It doesn't exist in your model because if I'm a millennial or a worker and I'm working at home, yeah. that means every single IP device on my network is potentially a compromise point. Correct, so, you have, huge so, so you have to start with that a device never ought to be trusted and every network is hostile, right? If you start out with that premise, then you build trust over yeah. time, right? And how do you build trust? You first say, you leverage user identity. You say, okay, Dave's who he is, right? And so that becomes an identity. You say this device is trusted or partially trusted. So one of the things we're announcing as part of uh, innovations today is what we call workspace risk analytics, so which means we're able to provide a risk score, right, for that device. And we can say, hey, this device has a risk on a score of one to 10 of eight, which means I can mostly trust it, maybe I don't trust the sensitive apps. So therefore I block access to the most sensitive apps, right? So you use a combination of different things. You use things like NSX micro segmentation to your point about how we build in the VMware stack. Um, the carbon black acquisition is phenomenal because it gives us threat intelligence. So collectively we're able to sort of implement this zero trust model, right? So those are the three main topics, right? Is employee experience, Unified management and zero trust security are really, really important. I, I want to ask you about, I mean, your tenure at VMware coincided with the AirWatch acquisition. Yeah. Yeah. And prior to that event, VMware struggled in yeah. this space. True. Um, Citrix dominated your, pre, your, old, you know, your former company, um, and you're kind of fumbling around. And then AirWatch, now AirWatch, if I recall, correct me if I'm wrong, was not like the number one player, just like people are saying Carbon yeah. Black's not the number correct. one player right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. And then you get into the VMware flywheel effect, where Sanjay Poonin came in and was a great leader. But I wonder if you could sort of describe the ascendancy of the end user computing business at, at VMware. And I'm curious, you mentioned Carbon Black, can you kind of replicate yeah. that with our endpoint cloud security piece? There's obviously a security use case, so you clearly just described it, but take us back That's a little great, bit. That's a great, great, great question. So um, actually, yeah, I joined right when literally maybe a month before the AirWatch acquisition, mm -hmm. right? And so, as Sanjay and I and the rest of the team sort of worked this, we said, hey, listen, AirWatch is a phenomenal sort of mobile management and security player. Uh, we had a very good product in Horizon, uh, VDI, but it was a little bit isolated, and there, there were others like Citrix that have sort of uh, moved ahead in that space. So what the first thing we did was, uh, we had three assets actually. The third asset was we had a federated identity asset that we had purchased but not leveraged. So we said, hey, you know what, the identity really has to get coupled with des you know, the desktop world and the mobile world. So we actually took these three piece parts and started integrating it. As we started integrating it, we said, you know, this actually forms a very interesting workspace. And we said, it's a digital workspace, so we sort of coined that term and started to really tie together the experiences a user would have, whether they were on a mobile device, a physical desktop, or a virtual desktop, right? And made that seamless, so that's when the Workspace ONE app was born, and this was probably around the 2015 time frame. So we started releasing it, and then we started t stitching together basically all the backend integrations, right? So out of, this, out of that was born a Workspace, and so in 2016, with some momentum in the Workspace, our desktop business came back because now it had, it, it, you know, and we'd done a lot of work on the desktop business as well. We made it very competitive with Citrix. We bought app volumes, we um, integrated that, we made it actually the best VDI solution in the market, so we got tremendous traction by itself in the horizon space. And then integrating at Workspace, people said, you know what, I need to get to that Workspace, and why am I dealing with Citrix, this horizon, um, solution within workspace, you know, more than solves my problem, in fact, is better in certain areas. So that sort of got momentum going around that. So we really built that workspace momentum, and that was, I would say, till about 2016 or so, and then we saw these, uh, you know, three things coming up. One is, hey, employee experience matters. We really started pouring effort into the employee experience from, you know, day one, day two and beyond, and then recently, including this show, we added, we've added sort of day zero and then the offboarding piece as well. So employee experience became sort of the lightning rod for why somebody would adopt this Workspace ONE platform, which we'd built by then, right? And then we added on 
this ability to do uh, modern management, especially on Windows and Mac, which was really starting to take off last year, completely round, rounded out that portfolio, enhanced that capability, and then we've added now the zero trust model, which is, uh, which is now sort of bolstered by the acquisition of Carbon Black. So you can see this a set of cascading, thoughtful moves, but we did it in a way where you know, it was really, truly integrated. So when, as we come out with Carbon Black, now one of the most interesting things is, uh, right when Carbon Black comes into the fold, we've already done the integration. We're actually going to show it in my keynote right after this, right? We're actually showing the integration between Workspace ONE Intelligence and Carbon Black. So you, there you have it, you already have an asset mm. that's completely integrated. So the risk score is interesting to me as well. So as, as endpoint security becomes yeah. much, much more important, we know phishing is you know, the, a big way that people get, you know, give up credentials. Does any of this seep into machines and IOT and edge? Yeah, and fabulous question. I wonder if you could comment no, absolutely. on that. Absolutely, I think, listen, we, if you think about um, risk scores, and if you think about risks at large in devices, they've been largely on Windows devices. And not to blame it on Windows, I think they've, you know, Microsoft has done a fabulous job of sort of, uh, you know, progressing Windows, but you know, by far it's the most used operating system in the enterprise, right? But mobile's getting used. They're, they're, you know, it's, uh, it's starting to make a, you know, a huge, it's starting to take a large part of the real estate of the enterprise. So I think we have a unique opportunity now through the data we collect on mobile devices with Workspace ONE using the underlying AirWash technology, coupled with uh, some of the um, you know, data that, you know, data analytics tools we have in the Carbon Black Cloud and, and the way they do sort of threat analysis and, uh, and determine potential attack vectors. We have an opportunity to leverage that intelligence and that data lake and that technology coupled with the data we have to really now build a broader sort of threat surface understanding across multiple devices and eventually that goes into IoT, mm -hmm. right? So we're actually going to be working even with uh, some of the other technologies we have in VMware uh, called Pulse, right? Uh, Pulse is very interesting because they have the ability to speak multiple device protocols that nobody does, okay? So we're going to take advantage of them potentially to sort of uh, be able to start to poke into devices that are attached to the office but not quite attached to the office in the sense they're not mainstream devices you and I would use but indirectly you may use it, right? So be able to sort of get a much broader view of A, visibility of devices. Second is um, how to manage them through a combination of Workspace ONE and Pulse. And third, to get the data so that we can feed it into this federated cloud of Workspace ONE intelligence and Carbon Black through understand the, you know, the risk. And that way you have this three-pronged thing, right? Yeah, I want to ask you a personal question. Uh, Pat yeah. Gelsinger was, uh, very prolific this week. I gave him props of his social media mojo, doing a selfie on stage with Craig, um, not Craig, um, Joe Beta. Yeah. Um, doing a little morning <laughs> thing, telling people how he prepares for his keynote. Yeah. So how do you prepare for your keynote? Do you like get up at 4 a.m. and uh, hit the gym? Or and, you got a keynote know, coming I'm up right after this interview. I do. I, uh, I'm not, uh, Pat, Pat's incredibly disciplined. I think, um, <laughs> he's, he's, I think he's been waking up at 4 a.m. for a long time, so I'm not that much of an early bird. But uh, I prepare because, um, you know, um, I've been involved in the construction of the keynote, so uh, for me, it's, um, I, we started work on this probably about three months ago because the story came together. It's very natural to me. Just like you asked me the question, yeah. uh, you know, tell me about the evolution. It's just a very natural thing because it's like telling your it's own personal story. It's relevant more than right? ever. It's not just VDI. Yeah. It's, it's, it's uh, so much more now. It's so much more and, you know, and I've lived through this and I've participated in most of the decision making. So, you know, when uh, my head of product marketing came to me and said, hey, what should we do with the keynote? I said, you know, I have the storyline in mind, right? Yeah. And it's around the same three or four pillars I'm talking mm -hmm. to you about, right? Yeah. How do we tell the story to the audience about what is the platform? Why should they sort of bet on it? How do they sort of deploy it? Show them some real world examples. Yeah. And then basically sprinkle in all the innovations. It sounds exciting. So, so because of that, the storyline's always been in my head, so it's yeah. not that hard. So it's just sometimes you just need to sort of, yeah. uh, as you're on stage. Well, you're preparing, it's all, you know, you're part of the construction. You're not, yeah. No one's handing it to you. Nobody's you formulated it. it. So for me, I yeah. think it's just uh, sometimes just rehearsing some of the key parts, and then of course the like visual cues and the. When to slam home the big point. There you go. You know, I've been looking at your career. You have a tech, you're a technologist, but also you've pretty much been a product leader. Yeah, in your definitely, career. definitely. So I got to ask you around some of the big movements in the industry. I want to get your perspective as, a, as yeah. an industry participant and also as a product leader as well, executive, been there and done that. 
Amazon introduced their first conference around cloud security called Reinforce this year. We had CUBE coverage there. And it was interesting because it wasn't like a typical security conference, like Black Hat, DEF CON, yeah. RSA. It wasn't so much IT, it was really about cloud security. Mm -hmm. And so Dave and I were speculating, we're like, this is kind of the first cloud security show. Yeah. I mean, dedicated to kind of cloud security. They didn't say cloud security, but yeah. it was essentially cloud security. What is your take on that cloud security? Because a little bit of a different view, there's a little bit of architectural change, but if you've got to have the on-premise, if you're going to have the cloud, if things are going to be working together, some of the things you're doing in security, quite frankly, around isolation to you know, working in any, in any environment, you're, at the, you're in the middle of it all. Yeah. What is cloud security and why have a conference? Is it relevant? What's your thoughts? That's a great question. I think, you know, you see many of these trends. I think, you know, listen, many of these conferences, they provoke, the, they're thought provoking, so it forces you to think, right? So when I think about cloud security, now traditionally, when you think about cloud security, you would think about technologies like CASB, right? Cloud Access Service Broker. Yeah. You would think about encryption. Uh, to me, it's much more than that. And all the usual stuff, whether McAfee's there, other people are there, but you know. Yeah, I mean, more than McAfee, I think you know, you you, it's sort of you think of the uh, the uh, the analog to cloud security is data center security, where you think of this sort of Amazon cloud living in an Amazon data center, and you know, how can we protect the you know the data and the egress uh, access into those cloud, and you you know, same technology sort of apply. But to your point that you sort of just touched upon. It's that cloud is not living in isolation, right? First of all, that Amazon cloud is connected to a whole bunch of you know, applications that are still sitting in the data center, right? So uh, they may not, they're potentially not moving the Oracle database to a data center. They're moving some workloads to the cloud, right? That's what most, most companies are. Okay. Hey, guess what? There's all these endpoints that are connecting. They're connecting both to the data center and the cloud. You're not going to proxy to the cloud to get to the data center, so there is gateways. So to me, cloud security uh, can't be an isolated, you know, sort of, technology that companies have to sort of think about. Now, is there, is there an opportunity to leverage the cloud to manage security better and get visibility on your security environment to do security analytics? Absolutely. So I think to me that's where it's going because security I think has been proven yeah. is no longer um, you know, sort of one sing single yeah. thing. Yeah. It's just you have to do multiple things. Every time I go talk to CISOs, they tell me they got this technology. I said, hey, wait a minute, you, you have 20, did you cut down any? Yeah, we've cut down a few, but you know, they're just nervous about cutting down too much because if that one piece of software it's catches one It's almost like an threat, insurance policy, they're insecure. Well, they cut two, they added four. Yeah. <laughs> That's what happened. Another right? tool, you know, so tool I think, shed. I think, um, I think the architecture will get simpler because it's way too complex. Yeah. But at the same time, I think um, you have to, there's no such thing as cloud security or network security or uh, endpoint security in So isolation. maybe there's a whole new group emerging within VMware that you could uh, add to your repertoire. Endpoint computing group. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think your end user computing, I why not have endpoint computing? Uh, That's what you're basically happening. Computing is, you know, is all about what do we need to do for the user, both as IT and the end user, okay? And now, now folks like HR and so on. So security is, has to be built into it, right? Yeah. Um, so much like that, I think when you go build out data centers or the public cloud and build this hybrid clouds, you know, security has to be built into that as well. Well, Shekhar, thanks for coming on and sharing your insights. It's a Thank super so important much. area. We're going to be covering this. This is cloud 2.0. This is end user computing. This is where the edge of the network is. That's where the people are. They are part of the edge, a thin part of the edge or a big part of the edge. You're going to be in the middle of it. We'll be following your traction. Thanks for coming on. Thank you so much. Thanks for Thank having you. me on. Kevin, pleasure. See you. Cube, Thank you. Cube Live here in San Francisco. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. Stay tuned for more. We got two sets, three days of wall to wall coverage. We're only in day one. Stay with us. We've got to have Michael Dell, Pat Gelsinger come on tomorrow, and a lot more guests coming on today. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs>